<laughs> Viva La Vega! Hi, I'm Lee Chantal here from VivaLaVegan.net and today I'm here with Brian, who you may know as the vegan black metal chef. How are you, Brian? Doing great. That's What's good. going on, everyone? <laughs> and we're in, we're actually over the other side of the world from where Brian lives in Florida in the United States of America. And we're in Brisbane, which is an estate in Queensland in Australia. What are you doing here? Uh, well, I initially came to Australia to do a vegan cooking demo tour with um, the post-punk kitchen people, the Isa Issa Chandra Moskowitz and Terry Hope Romero. Mm -hmm. And we did cooking demonstrations across Melbourne, Sydney, and Brisbane. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to stay an extra week in Brisbane to mm -hmm. hang out and have fun. Yep. And we've been having some fun. We've been going to lots of vegan restaurants, um, vegan groceries, going on exploring our wildlife in the wilderness. What's been your favorite? Uh, the wildlife has been really cool here. Uh, mm -hmm. I really liked all the, the parrot-like birds around mm -hmm. here. You all have uh, um, uh, these things called galahs, which is like a pink and gray parrot cockatoo thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's cockatoos flying around, which uh, we've yet to see up close yet, but we've seen mm -hmm. some flying around. Yep. And uh, lorikeets and all sorts of other creatures and wallabies. I saw my first wallaby yesterday. Mm -hmm. My first real indication that I was in another country. <laughs> yeah, because you've been saying that um, in in Australia it's pretty similar, especially in Queensland it's pretty similar to Florida. What are right. what are the similarities? Oh, the, the, the temperature and humidity yep. are about the same. They're both pretty hot and humid places. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the trees look pretty similar. Uh, yeah. You all have a lot of sort of palm tree like things mm -hmm. and um, just the overall overall landscape is, is a little bit similar. Y'all have a lot more hills and elevation. We mm. don't really have hills in Florida. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, I went to the we went to the Gold Coast. Um, and, On our uh, epic Gold Coast adventure. Yeah, and uh, and the the water there felt kind of warm, just like in Florida, mm -hmm. and uh, really felt just uh, pretty similar overall. I mean, uh, mm. besides that, I mean, uh, there's there's really only subtle differences between yeah. Australian things and American things. Yeah, so what are the differences? Well, uh, our plugs, our power plugs are always on. Uh, here, you have to turn them on or off at the plug. Mm. Um, so you don't, here we plug them in and then switch them on for it to, to activate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are always on and mm -hmm. you need a switch to turn it off. Mm -hmm. um, um, and the switches you have to go down instead of up. Yeah, I guess. I, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, hmm. I, I mean, other than that, there, I mean, there's of course little differences in the coins and mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. this, that, and the next thing, but the differences are really minor yeah. uh, compared to the similarities. And talking about differences, we have quite a few um, uniquely Australian phrases and words. What's your favourite? Aussie my, <laughs> <term>. <laughs> my favorite Aussie term so far. Uh, in the Avo or something. In the Avo, <laughs> like which a, means the afternoon, because we shorten everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kind of, kind of everything in the world is shortened here. Yeah. So I don't know whether, I mean, whether they're, they're calling something Brizzy for yeah. something from Brisbane or, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. or, and I think they just make it up on the spot. But yeah, uh, some people but, do. <laughs> yep, I'll give you that. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> otherwise, yeah, every, everything has a has a little shortened word that mm -hmm. I couldn't even recall for you now. But uh, yeah. But at the moment, they'll uh, they'll say, "Oh, hand me that," and they'll say it by some shortened mm -hmm. name. And yeah. And oh, and we discovered boardies. Boardies, boardies. Which are board shorts, short for board shorts. What which do you are, call them? Which are like a swimsuit or swimming or trunks. Trunks, in, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So we discovered that and oh yeah, when we went down the Gold Coast, um, we went to, you were saying before, we went to like um, Palm Beach and Burley to swim in the ocean, which is really nice. And we right. went to quite a few vegan places while we were down there. They have really great vegan um, restaurants and cafes down the Gold Coast. We went to Yum Cha mm -hmm. for lunch. Um, you call it, what do you call it? We in call the it state? dim sum in the States. So yeah. it's, it's basically just the, the bunch of steamed buns and spring rolls and uh and other like little like kind of asian tapas mm, yeah, kind of yeah asian small plates 
and and, uh, and we looked online for the because we asked one of the girls there and she said there's a difference Cantonese versus Chinese but what did we find out on well it said something? that uh, yum cha means drinking tea yeah. so I guess that it's just it there both seem to be the Very same similar. words mm. for it but I guess it came from uh, going out to drink tea and have these little snack things mm. or have these little yeah. light bites. And they're not really light when you have as much as we like to have to eat. So yeah. you're yeah. quite full afterwards. <laughs> and then we went to a mostly raw place called From Earth and Water for dessert. And then we went to um, Mandela Organic Arts Cafe, which has the, my favorite pizza. And yeah, it's, that's a really cool place. Oh, yeah. we went there twice, didn't we? Yeah, yep. Yeah, After the, I took Brian to the AFL, the Australian Football League, which is one of my favorite things. And it was your first experience of Australian football. What did it, you think? It was. They, they sports the ball up and down the field. And uh, <laughs> I'm not a huge sports fan, but uh, it was an interesting experience and sort of, sort of a mixture of of some kind of um, football or rugby like thing and soccer kind of all combined together. And it's, a, it's our very uniquely Australian sport. It's maybe close, some people compare it to um, like, uh, some people compare it to Gaelic football. So that's, I don't know, I don't know much about Gaelic yeah, football, but they I. compare neither it to I. that quite a bit. <laughs> and we went to Metricon Stadium down the coast and saw the Gold Coast Suns and the Brisbane Lions play, but my team, the Lions, didn't do that well. No, no, it was a, it was a bit of a flogging, as you say here. A flogging, yes, yes. But who did we see at Mandela? Uh, I guess we saw the best player in the AFL mm -hmm. uh, at the, the vegan place. Yeah, So that was kind of cool. cool. Gary Ablett Jr. for those playing at home. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so yeah, yeah, no, that was that was kind of cool, and it's kind of cool to see uh, a big sports kind of star here yeah. uh, go to a vegan place to, to eat, and I guess it's a place that he frequents. So yeah, definitely. he must have went right after the game, just like we did. Yeah, yeah, and we kicked you on the football afterwards as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they let you on the field here after mm. after the game, and everyone kicks around footballs and. Mm. Has a fun time. That was good. And then um, just over the weekend, I um, had a vegan Australian barbecue for Brian with my friends and my family. And Barbie, that's another word we shorten the for barbecue. Yeah, the Barbie. Mm -hmm. And my dad was showing um, Brian had barbecue. So there's a few photos on your Facebook or my Facebook about from the barbecue. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. We were cooking a bunch of things up and, uh, and I had an Australian dessert, I guess, mm -hmm. which is called uh, Lamington. Yeah. Yeah. So it's Lamington is like a cake and you put chocolate over it and then coconut on top. Some, some different uh, bush tucker, <laughs> which uh, uh, we had um, uh, damper, which is uh, I guess just a very basic bread. Mm -hmm. uh, they can make just out of flour, water and probably salt and nothing yep. else. Mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit of oil and uh, just kind of quickly baked bread uh, with some stew stuff yep. and and then Billy tea with that which is like a bush sort of tea yep Billy tea that was pretty good and then we had oh we had like a burger bar so we had different burger options we had some patties some we call them rissoles so they're like um, veg, well we would make them with vegetables and press them down so you can have them as a patty on a on a bread roll and you did we had some tofu and tempeh and you just made some sauces with them so that yep. was on the barbecue some lamb young sausages and some satay skewers mm -hmm. what else was there there's some other uh, there, there's, yeah there's a bunch of a bunch of other various little things and uh and it was a really good. good day good day for a barbecue beautiful weather in brisbane mm -hmm. and what will you miss in australia what will I miss yeah, in Australia? when you go home. I'll definitely miss all the little parrot-like birds. <laughs> but I think they don't exist in Florida because there's so many cats and stray mm, cats and people yeah. let their cats outside that mm. I think uh, just a handful of cats would devastate Australia in general. Mm, yeah. And uh, just kind of leaving them out, I guess that's uh, I guess that was a big problem here with, uh, with dogs and things mm. and, and the koalas and mm -hmm. yep. stuff like that. So I can definitely, like Australia is a... Uh, I guess every ecosystem is very kind of balanced to what it is, mm. and uh, and just an introduction of this or that could really mm. change the the whole dynamic of everything. Yeah, definitely, we went yeah on the walk. We went on a big walk yesterday down to one of the parks, and um, some uh, a, a guy we were talking to. We only saw one wallaby, and he said there used to be many, how many years ago? And now mm -hmm. there's only one one female wallaby, and then. 
um, when we first came to Australia about 20 something years ago, um, there was a lot more koalas and now mm. there's not as many koalas and today we're going to go to Siramay Winery where there's a lot of wallabies like I'm um, just running around through the um, or hopping around through the vineyards and I love taking my international guests there so I can't mm. wait for Brian to see that and then we're going to go to a like a a park that sort of backs onto a koala park so hopefully we'll mm -hmm. see a couple of koalas there as well but yeah urbanization um, it you know, ruins their sort of habitats. Yeah, it? yeah, so, yeah. When I get in, and oh, I guess a lot of the wildlife here also mm. kind of grew up in an isolated environment in terms of that the entire continent is mm. kind of an island. Yeah. So, uh, so introductions of things was difficult before, but now, mm. of course, with uh, everyone coming around everywhere, mm. it's uh, much easier and much easier to uh, to spread things around, mm. I, just like everywhere else. Mm -hmm. So, Brian, why vegan? Why vegan? Mm. Well, or for you. I, have a, uh, <laughs> I have a detailed explanation um, on my website, uh, mm. veganblackmetalchef.com. There's a little Why Vegan tab. But I initially turned vegan uh, because I had a, in late high school, I had a girlfriend, actually. It's mm -hmm. kind of the most typical vegan story in existence. <laughs> and, uh, and she went vegetarian at that time. And I said, well, you know, I see that as the right way to go, but I'm not ready for that yet. Mm. And so I didn't. I stayed yeah. in my meat and dairy eating ways. And uh, until about my first year of college, mm -hmm. when I said, it was about a year later, and I said, oh, well, she didn't die. Mm -hmm. and Always good. Yeah, yeah, pretty pretty surprising. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, wow, well, if she didn't die, and I recognize that as the right way to go, then it's really just a, a fear in myself mm. that was preventing me. Mm. And so I couldn't just live with that fear in myself, so I went vegetarian at that time and for about two or so months and then went to an animal rights group on campus at the school I was going to, the University of Florida in Gainesville, mm -hmm. and went to a little group called the Animal Activists of Alachua mm -hmm. and saw a couple films that they were playing yep. in, uh, at the, the meeting and said, okay, well now I'm vegan. Yeah, that's good. And yeah, that's about it. And how many years is that now? About 13 or so years. Now. Yeah. Cool. No regrets? No, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you're talking about your website before. Um, you have a very, very popular YouTube channel called Vegan Black Metal Chef. Can you tell us about that? Sure. It's a, Basically, it's a, it's a cooking show, but there's no talking in it. And I write my own music to the episodes, and the lyrics to the songs are the recipes and what's going on. And it's all in a dungeon-like kitchen, and I'm in face paint and rubber armor and chain mail and uh, and all sorts of craziness and uh, it's basically just sort of the the cooking show that I wanted to see mm -hmm. and that's why I created it because there was nothing around like that is that well sort of like uh, I created it initially because after about 10 or 12 years 10 or 11 years of veganism at the mm -hmm. time I said wow well I think my meals are delicious mm -hmm. they're cheap to make they don't take forever mm -hmm. Uh, and it, I just felt like I lived a very doable form of veganism yeah. for a lot of people. And I said, well, the, the world needs to know about this. Mm. And, uh, and so I was thinking about making a cooking show, mm -hmm. but cooking shows put me to sleep. Mm. And I was putting myself to sleep just thinking about mm. doing, doing a normal now. cooking show. So just made the one I wanted to see and uh, to really just answer the question, what do vegans eat? Mm. And uh, I was going to make it whether people cared about it or not, but mm. it's way more fun when people care about it. Mm. Definitely. And um, why do you think um, the vegans and the metal scene are similar? What do you think connects us? Uh, I don't really think they're that similar. Like, uh, well, I mean, yeah. uh, in, in, in only the most cursory ways, uh, I don't think the metal scene has necessarily anything to do with veganism mm -hmm. in and of itself. Uh, I guess they're similar in some ways in that they're both kind of semi-fringe movements. Mm. Uh, they're, they're both sort of on the outskirts of yeah. mainstream society. Uh, the metal scene often will have lyrics and things about either political commentary mm -hmm. or social commentary yep. or religious commentary that, uh, that kind of brings consciousness to an mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. And to me, veganism is all about bringing consciousness to your life and to your mm -hmm. actions. Yep. So in, in those threads, mm -hmm. uh, I think they're, they're somewhat similar. Yep. But, um, but it's definitely not at the... Uh, necessarily anything to do with the music itself mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. vegan driven necessarily it I, can be i would definitely think the like 
you know, they're maybe both are sort of ostracized from the mainstream public, therefore maybe there's a connection with that somehow. True. <laughs> and um, so you you write music as well, you perform music. What's your band called? Where can people download? Yeah, my band is called Forever Dawn. It's, uh, my, it's my take on industrial black metal. Mm -hmm. uh, you can just go to foreverdawn.bandcamp.com and mm -hmm. it's also, I have a link to it at the beginning of all of the vegan black metal chef videos mm -hmm. and in the description of all of them. So if you click on any of them, you'll find a link to, uh, to my music. Mm -hmm. And it's so great to see other people using their skills and their talents to promote veganism to the public. What would be a tip that you could give to people to promote veganism? To promote veganism? Mm. Really just uh, live your truth. Mm. Uh, I mean, kind of, uh, I guess what I really mean by that is just kind of pay attention to yourself. Make sure your house is in order. You don't, you don't even have to just enjoying life and being vegan is promoting veganism in and of itself you'll mm. you'll be blown away by the number of people around you that as long as uh, once they see that veganism isn't a, isn't a big deal to you if mm. you make veganism your identity then in one mm. sense you're already unpromoting it because you've lost yourself if you if mm. you've made it your com if, if you've attached your identity to things like that uh, to anything really then uh then then uh, it's difficult to, to really live that truly. And, uh, and so just be yourself, be the best you you can be. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and just by doing that and being vegan, you'll be blown away by how many people uh, will ask you questions. Don't be offended when people ask you questions, even if they ask mm. you things that, that might annoy you. Mm -hmm. uh, or you've heard 1,000 times. Yeah, you've heard a thousand <laughs> times ever. Sometimes they, 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 yeah, they're genuinely curious yeah. a lot of times. Yeah. And even if they're saying it in kind of a snide manner or mm. this or that, they're, they're often genuinely curious. Yeah. And if you don't have that attachment, mm. uh, then you can just answer truthfully and you yep. can just be yourself. You don't have an attachment to them. You mm. don't have an attachment to, to, to anything that holds your identity. Yep. Then uh, you can just be yourself, and and uh, and and you'll be blown away at just how powerful even that is. Mm, definitely. So, what has been your favorite place that we've eaten in Brisbane so far, or in Australia? My favorite place so far. I'm gonna have to go with that Easy House vegetarian, the, uh, yeah. the dim sum or yum cha. Yeah, that was like, pretty uh, epic. Wasn't yeah, that it? was yeah. that was very good, and definitely ate myself till uh, <laughs> till it hurt but it was so worth it which we do all the time over here <laughs> first world problems but yeah and then we also and you had the epic burger at the green edge um which is our um, vegan grocery store and they have a little cafe yeah as well. green edge was fantastic as yeah. well mm -hmm. uh that's why i hate saying my favorite of anything mm -hmm. because honestly i've eaten quite a few really amazing meals mm -hmm. here and uh um and everything from the the green edge to uh, uh, green gourmet, I believe it's called yeah, in, in Sydney. Sydney. Yeah, yeah in Sydney, Sydney. Favorites, and uh, yeah. nature's uh, or vegetarian's choice, mm -hmm. uh, vegan's, uh, vegan's choice, choice. Next, door. Mm -hmm. next door with uh, in Newtown. Yeah, incredible vegan ice cream, and mm -hmm. also the other place had uh, incredible homemade uh, yum cha or dim sum mm -hmm. uh, buns mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. things like that, and um, and. Yeah, really great place. A uh, veggie bar. I think yeah. that's all. Is in, that in Sydney in or Melbourne? Melbourne? That's Melbourne. in Melbourne, Melbourne. in Fitzroy. Yeah, yeah, it's very popular, that one. Yeah, mm. yeah. The, uh, I had uh, some good stuff there. So really, yeah. it's difficult to pick a favorite because mm. there, there's really great vegan food everywhere you go. Yeah, I, Really, really everywhere. You just have to know where to look or have a host that can show you around, which exactly. I'm fine to do. <laughs> but yeah, thank you very much, Brian, for taking the time to speak to us today. And if you want to see Brian, make sure you check out his website, which is veganblackmetalchef.com. And you can find Brian and Viva La Vegan on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. And we'll see you next time for our next um, interview with inspiring vegans. Thank you.